in my professional career, I have never been in a school division that had so much access to decision making for people in all levels of the organization. We have to get this right right now because the community is depending on us. And to me, that de dedication to refinement speaks a lot about uh, what the future might hold for Manassas at large. And what program, what curriculum is going to reach all of the students? We believe that every student is entitled to the best possible education. Education is constantly changing from day to day, year to year. I feel like here all of us are kind of on the same page of ensure the success of our students and make sure that we are you know, putting quality education in front of them. To support and help those students be all they can be, be healthy, get educated so that they can become a, a healthy and, and positive member of their school community. Everything that we do as for the, for the students, just supporting them in any way. Everyone that I have met, from the superintendent of the school board to a first year teacher, everyone I meet is committed to the success of every student. I always say one of my mantras is that uh, no significant learning can take place without a significant relationship. That is the most important thing for me. If I don't have a relationship with my family and with my students, it's really hard for me to get my students to, you know, want to come to school to every day, to have my parents have faith in me that I'm able to give their kids a quality education. Um, so the first thing that I always do is just make sure I establish a good relationship with them. I call parents in the very beginning of the school year on a regular basis before anything pop off, is to stay in constant contact, keep them informed, and to make them know that their students matter. And our relationship matters because, first of all, the parents were the first teachers. So I need them, and I always tell them that I need them. That's with students, with teachers, with each other, with our community. Um, we're only just under 10 square miles, so I think that is how we become more powerful. Is to make the kids, the parents, the staff, all visitors feel welcome. I express that by giving warm hugs to the children and big smiles to everyone who walks through those doors. Another mantra I have is that students don't learn from teachers that they don't like. Building that trust, building that security, making that space very comfortable for all of us. I don't think we necessarily understand the impact we have on our students all the time. You have to be able to relate to them. It builds a bridge. They're with us seven hours a day. It is really important that we build a sense of family in our classroom, that they know they're safe, that they are respected. It's not just students in my classroom, it's the students, it, they're all of our students. And that community, I think, is important. Um, we take care of each other, uh, teachers work together. Manassas City truly do feel like we are a family here. Um, when I joined a decade ago, that's what I was told is it is a family and it seems like a cliche or a buzzword, but it really is. Uh, we are a family. We work together, everyone know each other. All of us are very close-knit here. We're like one big happy family and of course families are going to have their differences, but at the end of the day we're all coming together with the same value and the same view that our kids come first and we're all here to do that job. You know, at the high school we say one Osborne, but really we're just one big family, one big MCPS family. We impact each other every day. Administration, teachers. I know I can go to Laura or Natalie or Jen and they will help me with any problem I have. They have a great impact on my life because that is what Modesto City does. We impact each other's lives. I really like being a part of something where when we go to work, we're not saying, hey, let's do that again. We're saying, hey, how do we need to change that because we want to be better than we were yesterday? And that's, uh, that can, that's a little different than I think what people do where it's like, oh, there's a new initiative, so let's try that. No, we're committed to the things we know that work. We have pillars that we're going to keep doing, but we're always saying, hey, what do we need to do now? What's the next step? And how does that build into a more coherent puzzle? And uh, 
it's not just planning, it's not just doing, it's being very strategic and making sure that we're doing what's best for our kids and making sure that we're bringing in the best people and growing those people so they can be as successful as possible. I think it has to be crafted ahead of time before the learning happens. You really need to think through what you want the students to come away with um, and then go backwards. If, if that, find your goal and then work backwards to how do they get there. Like let's work with them, let's figure out their strength, and then let's figure out their challenges. And because I have the experience on that, like, oh, I remember I had a student before that was like that. So let's try to figure out, let's use this skill. But because even though I'm experienced, I'm like the new teachers that come in, they also have great ideas. So if we blend them, at, like both ideas together, like that's going to support our kids. Giving the students those opportunities to talk and engage is so important. Cooperative learning is when all students are engaged pretty much at the same time in the same learning activity. Asking a question, all the students are engaged in that, answering that question simultaneously. We've been doing the Kagan strategy structures um, and it really values all the learners no matter what their level is by allowing them to participate and have a part. It also holds them accountable. Help our teachers and our students and our staff create the spaces that provide stimulating and um, meaningful learning activities so that all students have an opportunity to be successful and to reach their potential. We intentionally plan for students to succeed. And that shift in mindset, the research tells us that students who have teachers who believe they can achieve, they do. Um, and it's just that simple. Each meeting we talk about the fact that we know our students are going to do well. Now, what do we need to have in place so that they can do well? Um, and that conversation, when we phrase it that way and when we um, have that intention around success, um, we know exactly where we need to pull from. So I empower kids by starting with high expectations. It's important for them to set the tone um, of what's expected for them, knowing that this is going to be a hard journey and you're gonna have the support that you need. Positive reinforcement. The first thing we do when school starts all during the year, all day, during the hallway, I say, look kids, what we gonna have to do, we gonna have to do a lot of believing in yourself right now. For students to reach their full potential, they have to know that someone believes in them and that is our job. When they walk in that door, they know that they have someone on their side, that we believe in them, and that things may be hard at first or tricky, but it will be okay. That we, were going, we are gonna get them where they need to be. There's a quote that I like too that says something like, uh, my teacher thought I was smarter than I was, so I was, right? And they believe that, and you, you constantly instill that in them building them up, making them believe in themselves, because it starts with you. A lot of it too is building their confidence. A lot of the kids that I see come to me where they really struggle with reading on the basic foundations in fifth and sixth grade. It's, it's heartbreaking to me because I struggled with reading myself and I empathize with what, I, I could start crying right now. I empathize with like how they feel and knowing like it's going to be hard for them, but they can do it and just, the impact that it has on them later on in the year when their faces start to smile, when they're able to decode big words and actually understand what they're reading is amazing. You know what my students say now? They say, I'm smart. I'm getting smarter. You know, I love that about them because that means that I have influenced them in a positive direction. The people here are here to really work because why? They believe in our children and that is that's the through line in every conversation that I've had with people here in Manassas. I mean, we're a small division. We have five elementary schools, two intermediate, one middle school, and one high school. So with that being a small district, we're able to use our skills and expand them to our community, not just in school, but just reach out doing that outreach work, because without that outreach work, we're not going to know what our community needs.
Yeah, so I think one of the things that sets us apart here in Manassas City is our team program. So that's our mentoring and induction program. Uh, we do it over the first three years that teachers are in our division. We also do it for any teacher who's new to Manassas City from another division. They're what we call NETS, newly hired experienced teachers. But the main focus is how to develop them instructionally so that they can become the best teacher for their students in hopes that uh, they can gain the skills they need to really have an impact on the kids that are in their classroom. And what we're really trying to do is make sure that we're supporting those teachers in all of their needs. So yes, sure, we're going to look at them from instructional and we're going to try to help them grow instructionally but we're also looking to kind of support them in everything as they learn. So what's it mean to live in Manassas City? Like, I mean, you're in a, a city, but it's small and you're right outside of DC. And what does it mean to work with our students? And what does that mean in terms of the culture we're trying to build? So we're there to answer all of that. Um, I get really excited when they message me over the weekend and text me and I'm like, oh yes, like you need my help, I'm here for you. So we just support them academically and then also just being a teacher. Like if you need support, a breather, like just breathe in, breathe out. Like, so we're there to support them. To not only be successful, to go home feeling like they made a difference, but so that they can support our students. Because at the end of the day, that's what matters, is our students getting what they want. And our new teachers need a lot of support to make sure they can do that successfully. It's feeling welcomed and feeling accepted and feeling like they do have a home, which is MCPS, <laughs> so. So CLTs, Cooperative Learning Teams, are designed as the space where a group of teachers can come together and share their strength and share their understanding about the standards that our students need to master. As instructional facilitator, my role really impacts the relationships with teachers and students and their achievement because I get to be the person that helps bring the teachers to the table and get to bring their expertise to the table and tap into all of their individual knowledge, all of their experiences, all of their relationships with their own students. Our teachers all bring something unique to the table. They bring long experience, they bring innovative ideas, the teachers who are joining us fresh out of college are bringing new learning. And so in CLTs, we make sure that we have a diversity of voices so that all student uh, pathways are represented. And we do a lot to really talk about if this is our goal, what do we do when students have reached that goal? What do we do when students are struggling to reach that goal? Um, and in that way, we try to make sure that we are not only pulling from the tools that we have, but building our own professional practice so that we're better empowered to meet the needs of students. They make sure that we are all on the same page. So our students all get the same opportunities. So if someone in my class is not getting a different opportunity from someone in your classroom, they all receive quality education from their teacher. And that is what you see in CLT. You have to have someone to maintain the building and everything. You got to have everybody, the educators, the staff, custodians, you gotta have all that whole crew working the school. Basically, we keep everything running behind the scenes. Um, anything that uh, requires assistance, anytime anybody needs help, we're the first responders. We keep the buildings clean as possible and safe for them so, so they don't need to worry about anything just making sure that everything is disinfected. Um, we use uh, a, a UV tower that actually kills a lot of bacteria and a lot of just sicknesses. That is what our custodians are actually out doing and making sure that when the kids come back into school the next day, we don't have that uh, barrier for them as far as them getting sick. If, uh, if a stove goes down and the, and the kitchen staff can't cook, kids can't eat, kids can't be here. If the power doesn't come on, teachers can't teach, kids can't be here. It's all for the kids. So everything that we do as a team, um, I lean on them, they lean on me. Without each other, I can't do anything. I don't want the environment to be the excuse. You know, I want you to be having, having the perfect education that you can. You know, I always think of, what if my child went here? I want her to be as comfortable as she can so she can learn as much as she can those type of things, anything that stops them from being able to learn or giving the blame, I didn't learn because 
that water dripping. That light was blinking and I couldn't focus. So I can't give you that excuse. You're not gonna use me for that excuse. Those are the barriers. Oh, there's snow, we can't go to school. No, not on our watch. <laughs> And so basically, I ensure that the department has what it needs to be able to run park properly and to be able to feed our kids. Um, the real work is on the ground in the schools. Uh, my staff and managers are fantastic. And really, they work to make sure that we're preparing meals that are high quality, they're nutritious. Breakfast, lunch, we do some after school snack programs, and we also have the dinner program at Osborne. It's open to all students. and. Um, Thankfully, under the Community Eligibility Program, CEP, we're able to offer them all for free of charge. So the fact that we're able to help our students and families not have to worry about you know, purchasing meals from us or purchasing food for groceries for packed lunches, they could just come through and get them, it's very important. We never know what's going on with the students outside of school and what meals are getting outside of school, if any. So to be able to provide that to them is very special. I'm a staunch believer that you cannot educate a student that's not healthy. And a healthy student cannot be educated to their full potential. Student Health Services aims to remove any or all health barriers so that the student can attend school. One thing I want our community to understand is for some students, the clinic in their school, that school nurse is the only healthcare professional they have. We have a registered nurse in, in every building, and I'm so proud that Manassas City had the foresight to hire an all registered nurse team. And we are just so proud to have a highly qualified team to take care of our students. High quality work-based learning is a program that is in Manassas Public Schools. It's kind of the second year of the program where we um, engage business partners in our community who want to work with students and primarily in the form of internships, externships, job shadowing. We have a few school-based enterprises, but the whole kind of synopsis around work-based learning is getting kids exposed to the world of work. You know, the 2024 job market, it's really, really challenging. It's different. Um, and we want to make sure that our kids are workplace ready whenever they um, leave the eagle's nest, per se, um, here at Osborne High School. We really want to just make sure that our kids are um, ready to take the next step, either being enrolled in college or going into the workforce or going into military armed forces. Uh, so our kids are, you know, taking that next step. So we offer various after school programs. And it's really actually, besides academics, math support, um, SOL remediation, we also offer after school clubs. We provide multiple opportunities for students to be successful in the classroom and outside of the classroom. And the extra opportunities to play soccer, to play basketball, to have running club, to be in Lego League, and all of those opportunities to explore who they are outside of the classroom really strengthened who they are inside of the classroom. They like and they enjoy and their interests, then they're more willing to come to school and they want to learn more. Our attendance has increased. And it's because her kids are so excited about coming to the club that they come to school. I mean, that's incredible. That's all about being connected and feeling a sense of belonging in your own building. Of course, we're, they're there for learning, um, but, but they're also there to, to build relationships, work on their social skills, being a, you know, if it's, if it's the girls' soccer team, it's being a good teammate, um, just, and then learning life lessons. Um, through athletics and, and our activities. Or if it's esports or performing arts or athletics, it's getting those kids involved in something at the school and just to, to build relationships with, with other students. If I were to summarize MCPS in one word, it would be committed. Believers. Purpose-driven, 100%. 
Everything that we're doing in Manassas is intentional to support all of our students to be successful. And therefore, everything that we do is purpose-driven. Oh my gosh, guys, this is hard because there's so many words. <laughs> <laughs> one word I'll say, fantastic, because that's one of my favorite words. Fantastic, I just, I just love it. Manassas City Public Schools is it, great. Powerful. Resilient, and our teachers and our staff are always going for these kids 100%. Diversity. This community deals with like a lot of different people with a lot of different backgrounds, and you never know like where they're coming from or why they're here. But at the end of the day, we are here to take care of each other and you know to treat each other with respect. One word I would use to describe MCPS is a family. I feel that everyone here is supportive and loving and willing to help and cheer you along the way. That's the word home. That, that's what MCPS is. I definitely come here, I feel welcomed with everyone from custodians, from the cafeteria workers, from the teachers, from the superintendent. Because the way you get things done as a family, that teamwork that you bring, that camaraderie you build, is I believe, you know, probably one of the best things. Everyone that I see in the division, it is family and you feel welcomed coming in here. So. I, I call this, like the word, hope. All right, as we venture on to the next school year with all of the changes and things coming on, I just wanna encourage everyone to stay the course. As you step into the new school year, is surround yourself with positive people to help you grow individually and as a team. Collaborating, sharing, mentoring, growing together. Lean into each other, trust each other, do this together, and I think that this is gonna be a really incredible year. And together as a team, we can do anything. To all of the friends and family out in MCPS, our 2024-2025 school year, I wish you all the best. It will be okay. We will get through this. There will always be someone there to help you. We've got a lot of awesome people in this division who are gonna be there for you, making sure that you're successful every single day so that when you go home, you know you're making an impact on not just the students in your classroom, but Manassas City as a whole. And it's important to remember that everything we do is for our students and for our families. Continue to do the work diligently as we add more resources to our tool belt and continue to positively impact student learning. To give ourselves grace as we extend grace to other people. We're still learning like the students are, so we're learners as much as we are teaching the learners, but we got this one day at a time, right? I, I, I literally just use a weather. You guys can do it. Try your best. So, yeah, that's it. Best of luck for the 2024 25 school year. Together, we will do this. MCPS Convocation 2024, take 27. Action. Whoa, my bad. That's <laughs> good. Sweet. I've always wanted to do this. I'm oh, sure yeah. everybody says that. Oh, yeah, am I it. am I ready? Nice. Okay. <laughs> it's so, a fun part. <laughs> yeah. So I have this for you. It's our slate. Look at this. <laughs> this is like so cool. <laughs> you know I'm a pre game teacher. I'm like props, everyone. Yeah. Hi. Convocation. Convocation. All right. So turn it around. Yep. So, yep, turn it around. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? I have to say all that? <laughs> Today, take. And then, that, oh my gosh, this is so hard to do. This is, okay. Okay, let me go to this. Are we recording right now? Oh no. Is it already recording? This is so embarrassing. Okay. This is so awkward. <laughs> Oh no, that was that film? Yeah. Oh gosh. Y'all gonna show all those. I guess just snap it. Right. Yeah, so <laughs> I've never been on film before, so this is like this news. Is first? This yeah. is my first. I was like, thanks, Al. This is why I'm not in television. This is just I, like good, I would not. Oh no. When yeah, does the click happen at the start or the end? Am I at the end, so I don't click yet. Okay. Why did everything else come on so easy? And then I'm like overthinking this part. <laughs> Hi. Nope, sorry. 
M, nope. And you know what, I, I act all day long because I teach. I mean, take four. <laughs> I'll say take four. Because Ooh. I messed up like one, two, three times. Yeah. <laughs> MCPS complication 23, 24. No, 24, 25. Oh my God. MCPS complication 2024. Take 27. Action. <laughs> 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 Boom, boom, boom. Okay, so, the, so your questions are gonna be uh, short though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. Come this Breathe way. in, breathe out. Okay. Y'all producers <laughs> <laughs> are intense. Good, I'm starting to sweat, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the sun right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I am sweating so much right now. Don't add that part to the bloopers. <laughs> Oh, no promises. Well, yeah, fair enough. I'm nervous. The longer we take, the more nervous I get. That's all I had to do, right? <laughs> oh, this out. I cried. The teacher is setting the stage, but it's the students who are who are running stage. That would be mine. And I don't want to see my phone ringing on the complication. <laughs> Shout out to my mom, Maria Martinez. I hate an elementary school. Besos, te quiero mucho. To my wife, Emily, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of you, I love y'all too. <laughs>